This article I'm about to read should serve as a warning. Yes, uh, a warning for people who like to smoke my warning. Travel to other countries. I've seen people do that, especially uh, some people who vlog. They travel around the world and were stupid enough to have like <laughs> marijuana, you know, current marijuana with them. Well, you're not in America anymore, or you're not in these Western countries anymore. You know? What you can get away with in certain states. In, in some of the parts of the world, you're talking about years in prison. So this article is from, what's this, the sun? The Scottish sun. Never heard of this. Anyway, Dubai jail hell, Brit Air hostess. We use the word flight of Flight attendants, we use those words. Air hostages. So, British Air flight attendant is freed after spending two months living on bread and water in Dubai jail over this cannabis. Well, <coughs> the bread and water sounds like an exaggeration. I don't know if it's true. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's the kind of punishment from like the olden days. Uh, close to torture, brain and water. A British Air flight attendant living, living on bread and water in a Dubai jail being a jail being arrested on drug charges has been free. And this is updated August the 23rd, 2020. That was Sunday. Darren Crawford, 23, 23 years old, was arrested when cops raided an apartment be belonging to a man she said she only met for the first time that night and found two cannabis joints. Wow, lady, you got to be careful. <laughs> you just met a man the first night and you over his apartment and you don't know what the hell he got in there. You have to be careful. You know, just me and a man. You gotta be sure. You know who you're dealing with. There's a picture of her here, and she works for Emirates. Emirates flight attendant from Liverpool was arrested in June. Hmm. That's her official picture there. Look at her. Now I I kind of browsed through the article before. I didn't really read it. But I saw she had some really hard looking pictures. And I was asking myself, wow, you know what? They should put a picture of the man who was stupid enough, who, whom she met. Because this woman is really hard looking. And I have to ask myself, what would it take to get a woman like that over to my apartment? Wow. My goodness, and she's 23 years old too. Man, there must have been something going on here. Because why would she even go over there? And you know, and um, I listened to, I think MJ MJX XX. She vlogs, and she stays in Dubai. I don't know if she heard about this woman. But over there, they give you free free places. They have, I think, they have a curfew. You have to be home in a certain time. So, unless you want to live off off the campus or what have you or wherever, then you have to pay. So, it's free. Only thing you have like a roommate. So maybe that was her excuse. Maybe um. Maybe she didn't want to go back to the Emirates uh, quarters where she has to sleep with a roommate in another bed. Who knows? Anyway, let's get back to the story. So, there is her with the trademark uniform. 
There's a picture of her here. Hmm. All right, smiling. Wow. Another picture of her here. The Emirates flight attendant from Liverpool was thrown in Bal in Al Bashar jail, and her family claimed she was forced to sign a confession. <laughs> Why would she sign a confession? <laughs> or in, instead of contacting um, the the British, I think the, there should be a British embassy or consulate there. That's what she should have done. Because, you know, let me just say something here. I, I watched um, the operations, Emirates operation in Dubai and um, the airport over there where Emirates land. And th that's their home base. And that whole operation there is run by British people, you know. The, the, the main lady, the lady who's like with the the ground uh, ground control like anything with passengers and so forth she's a british woman yeah so you know <laughs> you feel at home there so instead of signing confession you have a lot of a lot of british people around there especially the airport at dubai airport i never been there but i saw the the show um i forgot the name of it airport I don't know if it's airport Dubai, but where they do these shows with different, they have one also in Heathrow Airport, they do one, they have one in, um, in Australia also, I think maybe in Perth, maybe in, um, but I, know, I remember seeing one in Australia where they like get lots of drugs and so forth. But this one particular, this lady, she's like a, a ground manager and control, and she solves a lot of problems. But anyway, they hire a lot of staff, foreign staff, to run their airport. Now, getting back to the story here. So the family, they were extremely concerned for her welfare while she was being held in the notorious prison. But Liverpool MP Kim Johnson has confirmed Darren has been released from prison after speaking to her family. Right? Delighted to hear from the family that Darren Crawford has been released from Dubai detention she treated. Thanks to all who supported Darren. Looking forward to seeing her back in Liverpool. Her sister, Danielle, 28, said how Darren, who lost her, her mother, age 11, moved to Dubai in September 2018 after securing a dream job with Emirates. Speaking before her sister's release, Danielle said she's innocent. She was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. The police have been trying to interrogate her, but she doesn't even know this guy. Wow. You know that? You have to be careful, uh, you ladies who meet up with guys and date these men or what have you. She doesn't even know the guy, but she's with him, you know? In, in their culture, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. In those Arab cultures, in those countries, they'll find that outrageous. Uh, back in back in 2003, I was in Lebanon, and one girl I met from, uh, you know, from the internet, she invited me a few times. So I went down finally. I didn't want to behave like I'm a chicken. So I went down to Beirut. She wanted me to stay in her house, but I said, no, I'll stay in a hotel, which I did. So I stayed in the hotel, met her family and so forth, and she taught me. At the time, she was like, like 22, 23 years old. She told me that she cannot go live. She had a job and everything. It's not like 
how Be uh, Lebanon is all messed up now with their currency and that those explosions. No, it wasn't like that. It was fine. The economy was fine. And she had a job. She told me, she said, I cannot leave my home. I cannot go live on my own <laughs> until I'm married. You see, so there's a pressure there. She has to be married, she told me. She cannot leave. She has to, no matter how old she is, she has to remain. And she, was, she wasn't she was even uh, Muslim. She was, um, what do you call it? That was like, the, the, she was Christian, something like Catholic. Um, I forgot the word they call it, but anyway, they're similar to Catholic because I visited one of the churches and they had everything just like the Catholic, the rosary and so forth, you see, in the Catholic church. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So that's the religion they have over there. Different, but not, not, so she's not even Muslim and yet, but, but it's their culture. You can't leave. You can't, you can't be like that. You can't go live in your own. So, when she was arrested, the police took her phone. She managed to call me a few days later when she was being transferred to jail. At first, I couldn't understand what she was saying because she was just crying and crying. She didn't eat or sleep for days. She doesn't drink or smoke and has a good job with Emirates. So it is a shame she has got caught up in all this. She's only 23 and she's just so scared. Darren's family said she needs urgent medical assistance after developing septic tonsillitis. The head of a charity detained in Dubai who supports British jail in UAE said they had been concerned about Darren's treatment. Let me just stop there for a moment, you know. For some reason, I think the British seem to get themselves into a lot of trouble. <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm picking on the British, but I've read a number of stories, especially with alcohol. Now, this woman doesn't drink. That's what her sister said. But they actually have a, a charity called Detain in Dubai to support British people. Jail. Why would you go to a foreign country? And be acting in a way, you know, um, where you, where you gonna get jailed? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's crazy. I I think it's fair to say that Americans traveling in different countries um, more or less tend to behave themselves. You know, I respect respect the culture, but the British always seems to have a problem. Why well, is like drinking or having sex with somebody and you know that's not allowed over the years I see a number of stories like that with the British and you would think they are no better because I mean the British you know their, their history they they've been around the world they travel the world they they had um, you know they had their British Empire <laughs> so you would think if anybody would know how to travel. They should, but apparently they know how to travel, but not behave themselves. That's the problem, I guess. So, Chief Executive Radha Sterling said the police are not letting her com communicate with anyone from the outside. They are not letting her make phone calls. She has been completely cut off in the police station. We have been trying to get lawyers to attend a person to represent her. We are just looking to progress this as quickly as possible. Darren was arrested alongside on June 21st. Notice how odd the uh, they write. I guess this is maybe in England. This is Scotland. Darren was arrested alongside, you know, that sounds kind of odd, the way that sentence is, alongside. 
we would we would say here in America she was arrested with, you know, but alongside, like standing next to somebody. On June twenty first, and then it goes on to say right here. June twenty first, man she had only met for the first time that night and managed to alert her family June twenty fifth. That doesn't look right, right? You just met a man the first time that night and you arrested with him. Her date is believed to be a marketing executive from London. Alright. So he's uh from London who she had met on a night out. She was told she would be released if she passed a drug test, but despite testing negative, was still detained. Another picture of her here. Hmm. Maybe flight attendant is not her thing, you know? With these kind of pictures that she got. <laughs> wow. That guy really that guy really was stupid, you know. I tell you if I had a girl like that over at my place, the last thing I want to be having is marijuana to be locked up <laughs> and ruin my night. I would have myself a good night. What an idiot. And another picture of her there. On a jet ski. Wow. And here. What is she wearing? Is that a dress? This is kind of too hot to handle. Oh, credit from Instagram. She posted on Instagram. Another picture of her here. Hmm. Right there. Another picture of her. Wow. She sure looks hot. That's as much as I can say. Looking at these pictures. Hmm. Look at those heels. Another picture there. And she met a man for the first time. She sure met an idiot, you know? <laughs> I tell you. Wow. A lucky guy. How lucky but stupid. You, you met a girl like that for the first time, she comes to your place, and both of you end up in, in, in jail, locked up? Come on. This guy needs a beating. I mean, let's face it, how, how many guys get the chance in their lifetime to meet a girl like that? Especially the first, first time you meet her, and she comes over to your place. And then you, 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 you do something stupid. Your night is ruined. Maybe your life is ruined. Look at the prison there. And by the way, this is a very hot place. Goes over 118 degrees Fahrenheit at times, right? Dubai and hotter than that too. Which is maybe, I don't know like probably 45 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> Dubai's Al Bashar jail where Daring is being held. Well she's out now for some reason. Was flagged as a health risk last month over COVID-19 fear. Right there. Okay. Let me just say this because this article doesn't cover everything, but I, I read it on my smartphone and accordingly what happened was that when she went over there to his place, the police came 
to his apartment, right? It was one of those surprise. This is not in this article, even though this article was updated yesterday, the 23rd. But unfortunately, that information that information is not in there. And I didn't I didn't read this article. So I'm surprised it's not I'm surprised it's not in there. But I'm going to my phone right now so I can read right here. So I don't want it to sound like this is what I'm saying here, but exactly okay. Let's see. Flight attendant free. You have to excuse me here because um unfortunately I didn't read this article before. I just look I just look at the pictures of her. That's all I did. Let's see here. Right attendant see right here. I want to get to the main part. She was tested for drugs. She hasn't been in the wrong place at the wrong time. The thing is, I think they changed this article because the original article that I read a few hours ago, I don't really see it. I'm seeing something completely different here. Okay, let me go back here. Uh, on UAA police raided the man's apartment while they were both there and found two joints of marijuana, right? Right? I want to read it so people will know. This, uh, it's not me making this stuff. Found two joints of marijuana. Not like, not like they found a kilo of marijuana. <laughs> they found two joints, like cigarettes, like, like you roll up. Two joints of marijuana. Right? And this is all the fuss they're making over this. Police took them both into custody. And she's been held ever since. Reports of the 23-year-old British expat Daring Crawford has fallen ill with septic tonsillitis. Right. Okay. And what they're saying here is. That just possessing that, you can get life in prison for <laughs> for two joints of my for two joints of marijuana. Isn't that something? I mean, we had some outrageous marijuana laws here in in the United States, and thankfully, they're making changes. Even here in New York, where I am, they had the stop and frisk in New York City. And they used usually the police with with their racist tendency under uh, Mayor Mike Bloomberg, they would target minorities like black people, Hispanic people, and uh, if you have uh, marijuana in your pocket, they will tell tell you to uh, turn your pocket us inside out. So once if you have marijuana and it comes out, the issue is that if you have marijuana in your pocket and it's not visible. It's not really, it's not really a criminal offense, but if you expose it in public, it becomes a criminal. That's how it was in New York. So the police came up with different ways in New York, and this is what's so insidious about these kind of laws here. So the targeted people, like black people and 
Hispanic people, Latinos, and um, you find the numbers are skewed. Whereas somebody who is white who smoked marijuana, the police never really target them. So it gives the impression that white people don't smoke marijuana, which is not true. They smoke just as much as black people or Latinos and so forth. Only thing is the police never really target them. The police never really go after them to give them a criminal record. And when you get a criminal record, you apply for a job, and then you ask if you have a conviction or you try to go into the military, and that will prevent you from, you know, going into the military if you want to become a soldier or you want to be a sailor in the Navy or things like that. People lose their chances because of those, um, those convictions or you lose out on a job you know so they see these are some of the the injustices that were happening this is why you see like a lot of stuff after the George Floyd incident and people bringing up all this talk about you know the injustices like in America and around the world too you know especially like in England too what's going on over there with black people over there being stopped by the police and so forth the same kind of nonsense you see, so this is what's been happening, and in her case, uh, this guy was targeted. I figure, I guess they figure, you know, he's a foreigner, British, or what have you. We're gonna target him. This is why I don't understand these British people. You know, they go to a country like Dubai or so forth, and they keep getting in trouble. Why? You know, is it is it that you really don't care or you think you're better than these people, you know, than these Arabs or what have you? Remember, you in their country and they have some crazy laws and they don't give a, give a damn about you. And worse, they have money too, you know. <laughs> they have money that they hire a lot of people from around the world. They hire maids, you know, whether it's from the Philippines and so forth. They hire pilots. They have the money because of the oil. And you know, money talks in this world. So you could be British and you could have come off your glorious days, you know, uh, having an empire. That doesn't mean anything in these countries. You see? And the fact that they have some kind of a charity to help British people who get in trouble in Dubai, you know, that really speaks volumes. That means he, the British people seem as though they're not going to really learn a lesson. <laughs> I mean, this guy was some um, marketing, marketing executive or something from London. Well, we're not hearing anything about him. He, chances are he's still locked up, you know. Why would you ruin your, your damn life over marijuana joints? And if you love marijuana that much, why work in a place like Dubai? Why why go there? You know why destroy your life? Because those countries don't mess around. No, they don't. You know, over smoking marijuana. <laughs> I mean, really now. You know, and and in and in in other countries like Indonesia and um, what's that? Thailand. They also have issues with drugs too, but depending. And China too, but depends on how much drugs you have. You know, you can get the death penalty. Maybe you wouldn't get the death penalty for two joints, but you sure will get locked up in in uh, probably Indonesia or or China or um, those similar countries like Singapore, for example. That's another one. They don't tolerate anything. They lock you up too. So this was very stupid. So, you look at this woman here, 23 years old, met up with a man for the first time. She has a very good, prestigious job, you know, flying to different places. And that job is not e easy to get because I remember MJ said, uh, MJ from Germany said when she went, she had, she had, um, she went to try for another job with another airline. She didn't get that. And she, I think, uh, might have been Lufthansa or something like that. Then she went to try for uh, Emirates. 
And she said there was a room full of people, you know. Lots of people. Lots of, lots of women. Lots of young women. The place was packed. Then they came down to three. And she was one of the three people left that day. So, and, and the reason I'm saying that is because to get this type of job is not really that easy. And she, she was one of those who got that job, you know. So this is not an easy job to get. After you go through all that, and then even when you get hired, you got to go through a lot of obstacle things. Like the training is not that easy. The training is tough. You got to go to their places. Uh, the exam they give you, you have to be, you know, you have to go into the water or they throw you in the water or like flotation devices and so forth. If the plane goes down in, in, um, in water, like in the ocean or so forth, you have to be able to get down there and uh, put on your device or so forth, be able to float in the water. It's a lot of stuff. And you have to know the type of aircraft you're flying on. You got you got to know stuff about it. I know somebody who worked that I met, you know, but she was working for Etihad, Etihad Airline. That's out of, um, what's that? That side of um, yeah, they out of the UAE, one of those other countries, the UAE. Yeah, and she said that wasn't easy too. A lot of stuff they have to learn, and, and depending on the, on the airline, you have to know something about the different aircraft. You see, you have to know, like in case you have to evacuate and so forth, you have to know different features, like for um, things like uh, security, things like uh, safety, a lot of stuff. And they're very strict too. MH is a strict company. People do get fired, <laughs> you know? So if, you, if you're 23 years old, you're in a strange country, you're especially in an Arab country, you're a 23 year old woman, you know what, best you go sleep sleep in the same place with your roommate do yourself a favor don't go sleep with a strange man or sleep in the apartment of a strange man you just met even if he's from England I don't care you know just remember this this lesson with this woman here what happened to her so her life is just about destroyed right now you know even though she might be out of jail, who know? According to the article I read before, they said they may still hold her to use her as a witness in the case against the man. You know, so they both mess up. She went to his place. I believe she. The other article said she met him on the internet. This one doesn't say that. This one says she she met him uh, when when she went out. But remember, she met him the same night that she went to his place. So she met him on the internet, and apparently, yeah, well, he must be a lucky son of a gun, right, to meet a woman like that, who looks like that on the internet, and she ends up in your place for the night, and you're stupid enough to have two joints <laughs> in a country where apparently they don't have anything like what we have called the, the, the Fourth Amendment against unreasonable searches and seizures. That the police could just come into your place like that, yeah, you know, not not like you're a drug dealer. It's just that like you're smoking joints. You know, I can understand if you if you selling drugs and the police come into your place and saying, "Well, you're a dealer," but you just have like a few joints you're smoking, and the police comes into your place, you know, um, unannounced, just like that, raid your place for having to. For having two joints, <laughs> my best my best advice is try to stay out of those countries. And if you work for an airline, then you you go there and that's your job. Well, you know what? It's best you stay. In. And if you go out, you go out with friends, like that girl M um, M J does. She travels with like an entourage of people. They go out together. It's best to do like like her. And if you want to smoke marijuana, wait until you get to one of those other countries, you know, 
that you can fly. But in his case, I guess he was working in Dubai. So his, his job was there. So, you know, you look around where Dubai is and what, what other countries are there that you can smoke marijuana in, you know? You're surrounded by all these other Arab countries with similar laws. So that's the problem right there. So if you're going to work in those countries, give up marijuana smoking. That's the advice. And if, you, if you're a young woman, you know, you just meet a man, just don't go stay at his apartment overnight. That's my advice. 